Yeah, to, to describe the basic, what it is, yeah. and, then, and then to... Uh... Well, this is a Buddhist symbol of the search for God. And uh, in the East, in China and Japan and so forth, it was always done in a drawing, which is two-dimensional, very easy to reproduce. And this is the first time it has been done in sculpture, in three dimensions. And of course it was very difficult to do them because of their size, because they're small, and, it, it, and it's, it's a whole scene. It's a, you see it's a man and trees and earth and so forth. So it was a challenge to me and I, I almost gave up doing it. I started then I gave it up because it was too difficult. But then one of my pupils, uh, Joe Brunetto, he, uh, he sort of goaded me and uh, I tried again. And finally I got going on it and uh, uh, and I did six and I destroyed two because they were not good enough. But I find that four is enough. The original sequence is made up of ten scenes. And this is four scenes out of the ten. But uh, I find that, uh, that they are adequate, they're quite enough. Here is man in search of himself, in search of God, all alone in the universe. He wants to know who he is. And then he realizes that God is everything and everywhere. And so the ox becomes a kind of symbol of God. And uh, the ox appears, and man realizes that everything he sees is, is, uh, is God. And he captures the ox, he tames it, and takes him, takes him home and plays to him, worships him and plays to him. And then at the end, man is sitting at sunset in front of his house in meditation. And uh, as he meditates, uh, the moon disappears, and then the whole uh, the the whole landscape disappears, the house disappears, and he finds that it's, that he is the ultimate reality. The universe, phys the physical universe, disappears, but he finds himself sitting in meditation, and that's the realization that God lives within him. There's the man there. So can you tell us how you did these then? What? Can you tell us a little bit about how you did these then? Well, I started and gave it up. And Joe Brunetto, one of my pupils, this was about 15 years ago, he, uh, he challenged me. He said, oh, you can't, you can't give up. Uh, you mean to tell me that you can't do, uh, that you are going to give up? And I said, well, I'll try again. Anyway, he goaded me. So I tried again, and uh, this time I got, I got, by doing the first one over here, I got results, and I became uh, more confident, so I did the rest. But it was a great effort on my part, because I couldn't use models of any kind. It's all imaginary, you see. And I had already done uh, the uh, environments, so I was in practice. Had I not done the environments, uh, I couldn't have done it. Because these are all environments, you see. They're all, they're completely three-dimensional in space. You were really the creator of the environment, weren't you? Yes, I am. Nobody did environments before in the history of art. And, but the environments had more definite shape. They have walls and houses and people in it. And this, there are no walls here, you see. This is the earth and man in his primitive state. So I had to get the impression of, of, uh, of a landscape, of a spacelessness. And that was difficult. But you know, I did finally, did, they live in space, which meant that all the, the outlines had to be uneven, had to be, they had to merge into space, the outlines. There, there are no straight lines, there are no walls, you understand? Yeah, I get the, the sense of the man more or less in isolation just from the forms around him. Man alone in, in the landscape. Right. Or in the, in the universe, you see. 
And so there's this process. And they're all like that, except the last one where there's a little house. Right. That's the only one that has a man-made structure at, at the end. You see, there's a little house with that, but nothing else here. These are, this is just space and trees right. and rocks. And so that was the problem. And I could not have done it had I not, had I not already have done the, the uh, environments. So it's a step further, even in, this, in, in, the, in, in sculpture, in the concept of sculpture. These are a step beyond the environments, because the environments are much more human, with houses and, and forms right. related to uh, with the man related so to, the, yeah. to his surroundings. And I had myself not realized that I had gone a step beyond. When I did them, I didn't realize. I only realize it now that I look at them, right. that, that they are a, another step beyond the environments. So the ox is basically God as the essential self then? The, the ox is the symbol uh, of God, of, his, of the essential self, that's right. right. It, it's only chosen. The Orientals, the Buddhists, I imagine, uh, deliberately chose uh, a creature, right. the ox. In, in, because he's very elusive in the landscape. So they chose an elusive animal and, and, and to make it difficult. As I imagine that that's their intention. Right, well, I, I suppose yeah. the ox is a fairly difficult yeah. animal to, to The train. ox is wild and can be tamed at the same time. So right. They have a combination of a difficult animal who is uh, living all by himself in nature and who doesn't need uh, man uh, and I think that's, that's a good choice that they, right. that they made. Some, they, in some of the series, I, I remember the, the man is a very childlike figure. He's a very infantile figure in some You mean ways. in this one? Well, in some of this, I've seen this series a couple of times. Oh, and, you and, have? Yeah. And in some of the, the, the Eastern drawing series, I've yeah. seen that the, the, the man looks almost childlike. You're right, and I disagree with that. I think it's a mistake there. Because I made man a man alone, but not childlike. All right. I think it's. A, I think they made a mistake to make him childlike. I suppose what they wanted to do was to show his ignorance. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, but uh, his was not a question of ignorance. It was a question of of effort to, to look into himself, and a child doesn't do that. Right. Right. I think a grown-up man is the one. A man when really grown up. Uh, and in, in need of spiritual awareness. That's why I made a man instead of a childish one. Right, right. Well, it seems to me that they might be trying to suggest the child nature that you're the seeking child nature. out. Yeah, that's right. Which is what comes out when yeah, you find the Yeah, the child oxygen. nature, and that in a spiritual sense, is not a child nature. It's merely, uh, uh, merely a beginner's mind. Right, right. See? Which, so, is, which is what you get when you tame the ox. That's right. So I made a beginner's mind instead of the child nation. 